What's up everybody, this is Jared coming back to you again on the Keystone Carry channel and today I have a special video for you. One that, if I'm being 100% honest, I breathe. I gotta just breathe because this is super exciting. You guys have no idea how excited I am to talk about this. I'm so excited that my biggest fear with this entire video was that I would ramble on and on and on at the beginning and not actually get into the video because I'm actually that excited about the product that I'm gonna talk about in this video. And I'm gonna try really hard. I'm doing it, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Let's go. So right out of the box, you can tell this is not your average shotgun. This is not Grandpappy's little 870 or even a Mossberg 500. This is something of a completely different breed. It is a bullpup shotgun made by IWI and imported into the United States. And if that wasn't crazy enough as it is, it is fed by three, yes, three rotary magazines that rotate like a drum underneath the fore end of the shotgun. The overall length of this shotgun comes in at just over 28 inches. It is an 18 and a half inch barrel. On the specifications page of the website, it says it is eight pounds. I have not actually measured that myself, but it feels much lighter than that. Honestly, even loaded. It is a deceptively light shotgun. One of the coolest traits about this shotgun is the fact that they took the time to thread the barrel and it uses Benelli and Beretta style choke tubes. This shotgun features a short stroke gas piston system and it has two different settings, an H and an L. Digging into the manual, it says that the H setting is for three inch shot shells and the L setting would be for the two and three quarter inch shot shells that you would be running through this gun. Interestingly enough, while we were running the shotgun, we kept it on the L setting while running both low brass and high brass in two and three quarter inch and three inch shells. Had no issues with cycling and ejection and no malfunctions or failures to feed that were reliant upon the gas setting. The recommended ammunition for this shotgun is a minimum two and three quarter inch shell with one and one eighth ounce shot, 
that is traveling at least 1250 feet per second. Now I will note that we ran the gamut of shotgun shells, everything from clay bird shot, just target loads that were low brass, 1200 feet per second, one ounce shot, all the way up to three inch magnum rifled slugs. And I didn't have any issues at all. So what I would recommend and what it recommends online and in the manual is to test your ammunition. So figure out what you like to shoot for your different applications and then run it, make sure it cycles and then if it does run good, buy more of that ammunition. Even though they say that, I had zero issues in over 500 rounds running through these shotguns. Each of the tubes that you'll see up front here is going to hold five rounds of two and three quarter inch 12 gauge or four rounds of three inch. So what that means is this shotgun can effectively hold 15 plus one two and three quarter inch shells and 12 plus one three inch shells. Ammunition can be loaded from either side. As you can see right here, we have a way to load ammunition through here to get to the bottom tube on the right side. And then you have the exact same thing right over here. So no matter if you are right or left-handed, you can feed ammunition from either side. Up in the trigger guard, you're going to see a paddle right here in front of the trigger. That is how you actually rotate the magazine tubes. So what you're going to do if you're trying to load a magazine tube is make sure you have an empty one available. You grab a round, shove it in there. We'll put two rounds in here, maybe three. Let's just do it. Why not? When you're loaded up with your tube, you're going to rotate that tube to the chamber. There's a little button on the back here that you're going to depress. That's going to drop that first shell out so that it can get picked up by the bolt and then that simple, you have a loaded shotgun. That is an extremely efficient design to get this thing up and running. I did have some skepticism about this button on the bottom and I will dive into that and we'll talk about that in a second, but now you're ready to rip. If you want to unload the shotgun, all you do is pull the charging handle. It is going to spit out that shell, rotate that tube to the side. Then there's a little button here that you can depress and it's going to actually chuck out the shells. We'll do it again. And now the shotgun is completely unloaded. The controls of this shotgun are definitely not like your standard shotgun. Actually, I don't think there's any shotgun in existence that's gonna be exactly like this. The trigger is obviously right in front of the pistol grip. You have a cross bolt safety. In front of that trigger is going to be your paddle, which you would maybe call the mag release, but it's really just a paddle to rotate the cylinders. The charging handle is on the left side. From factory, the ejection port is on the right side. Now we did strip this shotgun down. I can't confirm this 100%, but it does look like you can switch the ejection port from right side to left side. And on the bolt itself, it appears that you can pop the extractor out, rotate it to the other side, and there's actually a hole machined through for a roll pin that mirrors exactly the same as was on the right side originally from factory. Now you're gonna to have to actually ask IWI about that. I cannot confirm or deny that. All I'm doing is communicating my assumptions and I assume that you can convert which way it ejects from on this shotgun. And I believe you can change the charging handle as well. One of the other features that this thing has is a really awesome butt pad. And I am very thankful that it has that because like I said, I put down hundreds of rounds in about a two and a half hour time frame. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it a lot. I feel scarred from the amount of ammunition I put through this shotgun. I wish you knew. Yeah. But it was fun, I promise. First impressions of the IWI TS-12. Jeremy shoots me a text, says, hey dude, we got a TS-12 headed your way. Once you get it in the video, cool. So I already handled it about two years ago, but I had no recollection of what this thing felt like. And honestly, when I was handling it at the show, I didn't get to manipulate it, shoot it, load ammunition into it, see all of that other stuff. So I didn't really have much of a basis to create a first impression opinion on it. So I kind of waited, kept my doubts and my other questions to myself and waited until the package arrived. About a week later, I got a TS-12 on my front door. Remember, I'm an FFL holder, so that was super streamlined. As soon as I unpacked the box, I was like, whoa, this thing looks like it came straight out of some Star Wars movie or, I don't know, some crazy intergalactic battle scene. It looks awesome. It also looks a little weird. So I kind of understand if you're one of those people that's like, ew, 
that thing's gross. And I also understand if you're one of those people that's like, dang, son, that thing is sick, because that was me and a little bit of the other one. But overwhelmingly, I'm like, this thing's freaking cool. Not to mention, it's super tiny. So I picked it up, I held it, it felt really light. There is a bunch of weight in the back where the bolt rides, but obviously that's because it's a bull pup. So my first impression of this thing was, okay, this is really cool, and I can't wait to get an optic on it and run it. If I were to pick out a couple things that kind of were flags to me, it was the magazine tube assembly, because it's pretty much reinforced polymer. So my concerns were reliability and durability of that magazine tube setup over time. Now, I didn't have, obviously, any time running it, but just an initial concern was, are these magazine tubes going to last? Is how it functions going to last over time? And I'm going to tell you about that in a second. One of the biggest questions I had with this shotgun was with this little button that's on the back here. So naturally, I'm sitting down by my safe, and I wanted to load up some ammunition into it. Not recommended in your house, but hey, whatever. I wanted to try it and see how this thing worked. And I just wanted to kind of cycle it through the tube, just like I could with my 930. My 930, you can just shove ammo into the tube and rack the, the bolt back and forth. It'll load the chamber, unload the chamber, load the chamber, unload the chamber. This shotgun's not like that. So I'm going to load this thing up again and show you exactly what I mean. I'm just gonna shove two rounds in the tube, rotate it forward, hit this little button that's gonna let the first round pop out and drop into the lifter in there, and rack it. Now, I've got a loaded shotgun again. When you rack this bolt, it doesn't load another shell in. It's super weird. It just spits out that one shell and nobody's home. You have to press this little button so as I was playing with this, I'm gonna just load this and unload it. So there one loaded in. Man, I got 12 gauge all over my floor now. So as I was playing with this, I noticed that this little button, when you press it with an empty tube, it locks the bolt to the rear. When you press this button over here, that's your bolt drop, it sends it home. Super weird, you know what else does that? Do it again. Super weird. You know what else does that? A trigger. Listen to the sounds. Trigger. Okay. And now this carrier drop. They sound eerily similar. So as soon as I did that and I was playing with it and realized that that button is what made it load itself because at this point i also hadn't read the manual kind of dumb on me i was like i wonder if that button's gonna drop the hammer now it does not do that but my initial thoughts were oh crap i've got a loaded shotgun what if i bump that button is it gonna send three inches of buckshot through my wall i unloaded the shotgun as fast as i could and did not play with it again until i read the manual after reading the manual i found out that they just call that the carrier stop button or lever or something like that I'm not exactly sure how that works or why they created that function like that. Maybe it is a safety feature so that you can't just rack a ton of ammunition through the gun and accidentally leave one chambered. Not 100% sure on that. I'm going to have to check with them. But I can tell you that it is kind of neat that it only allows one round to be chambered after that button and you can't just rack tons of ammunition through because it can be kind of confusing having three different tubes fully loaded with ammunition and no other way to empty them other than rotating them and hitting the buttons on the side by where you feed the ammunition into the tubes. A couple days later, Ridge and I jumped out onto the range and we got to run these things pretty hard. Naturally, the first thing I did was load up a bunch of three inch shells, shove them into the tube and I let her rip. And I can tell you that my initial response was just me laughing. I was just smiling so much because I just wanted to dump ammunition through this thing. The recoil impulse was absolutely manageable. Definitely softer than what I had expected, but it was a pretty stout kick back because we're talking about three inch magnum buckshot loads here that we were shooting. It is extremely addicting hearing that bolt lock back, pushing that paddle forward, rotating that tube, hearing the bolt go home with a new round and then dumping five more rounds down range. It is a very unique feel, very unique experience. Right away on the range, the reload drills are where I really saw the speed of this shotgun and the capabilities of it. 
because of the fact that it automatically drops the bolt as soon as you rotate a loaded tube into an empty chamber. So what I mean by that is, say you have five rounds in the tube, you shoot five shots. On that fifth shot, it's going to lock that bolt back. All you have to do is press forward on the paddle, rotate the drum magazine to the next available tube that is already loaded with ammunition. As soon as that locks into place, it dumps that shell, loads that round into the chamber, and you can fire those next round. It was a little bit awkward running the gun, especially when we worked on some barricade stuff where you had to really get the gun sideways and tucked in either ultra low shooting positions or even up high shooting through tiny ports because this gun is seriously almost 10 inches tall from the bottom of the trigger guard to the top of the pick rail. It is no small gun. It's a lot to handle. After running it a couple times though, you kind of get used to it. You figure out where to put your hands, you figure out how to hold it, and then you can kind of just run like normal. As I said, the recoil is definitely manageable. It was pretty aggressive when you're shooting some heavy loads, high brass, three inch buck, three inch slugs, and I kind of expected that. I have a lot of experience slug hunting and shooting a bunch of different tactical shotguns. They're pretty much always punishing when it comes to recoil with these loads. One of the things I also wanted to compare was just recoil between the Tavor 7 and recoil between the TS-12. I thought they would actually be pretty similar because the TS-12 feels lighter than the T-7, but I shot a video of me shooting both of them side by side, and I can tell you the TS-12 kicks butt. Tavor 7 feels like you're shooting a 223 after shooting the TS-12. One of the things that I was always concerned about whenever I'm getting into kind of oddball firearms is are they going to be reliable? And oftentimes, as you know, when we get into stuff that is kind of outside the realm of normal and it's built upon a totally different style of engineering, they're not always the most reliable. Well, I'm happy to say that at this point, the TS-12 has proven to be extremely reliable and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. And if it does, it's probably because I've got a couple thousand rounds through it and it's dirty and just needs cleaned. I will keep you guys posted on that and I'm hoping that it continues to remain a very reliable shotgun. Obviously the TS-12 is different than an AR-15 or even a bunch of other IWI products because you don't have any forend here that you're holding onto. You're actually holding onto the three magazine tubes. Unless you reach forward, there's kind of this little grip stop thing here, which is kind of what I've preferred over the last couple days of shooting. The only thing I'm gonna say is you are pretty close to the muzzle on the end there. But even holding here, you're about two, two and a half inches back. So there's no concern there for me. You have to gauge that for yourself and make sure you don't get your hand in front of the muzzle because that'll be a really bad day for you. One thing we noticed is if you hold on to the magazine tubes themselves and you push your finger forward as you are working between barricades, sometimes you can bump the paddle and cock this tube just a little bit. If you are not careful, you can actually create a malfunction with this shotgun. I don't think that this is necessarily a design flaw. I think this is a training issue where you need to train yourself through it. Whenever I move from one port to another, you will always hear me flipping my safety back on. My finger goes forward off the trigger so that I don't accidentally fire the gun when I don't want to. Downside is my finger rests on that paddle that we use to rotate the magazine tubes. So I suspect what was happening is I was really aggressively holding on to this, pulling out and going to another port, and then just slightly cocking the magazine tubes. So while you are shooting, just be conscious of the fact that your finger can touch that paddle, and with just a little bit of movement, you can actually cock the magazine tubes and make it so that it fails to feed the next round into the chamber. So my opinion after that range day is smiles. That's all I can describe this as. I was literally beaming ear to ear. I don't think I've had this much fun on the range since I got the Galil. Seriously, this, this shotgun is just an amazing piece of machinery in my opinion. I think that it's a very unique design. I think it's a little bit weird. I think it's a lot cool. I don't think it's gonna fit everybody well, but I do think for me, this shotgun has overwhelmingly outperformed my initial concerns, my initial fears, and my initial opinions of the shotgun itself. I think that the shotgun comes packed with a ton of features like M-lock sections on the front rail, threaded barrel for Benelli and Beretta chokes. They included two different chokes, an improved and a modified in the box. These are details that matter. You can feed ammunition from either the left or the right side. After my first impression of this shotgun, spending a bunch of time with it on the range, my next question was, where does this shotgun fit in? And I would say that obviously it is a defensive shotgun. It was designed for close range environments 
where you needed a lot of firepower, maybe breaching doors, all of the typical things that we would expect from a tactical shotgun. But what is so awesome about this shotgun is it has a threaded barrel, which means we could throw turkey chokes into this thing. We could run rifled chokes for rifled slugs. The amount of possibilities of this shotgun are virtually endless. And although I would rather have a carbine in probably 90% of situations that I would ever be in, a shotgun does still have its place. And I think that moving away from traditional shotgun designs have allowed IWI to create a totally unique design that brings shotguns back into the realm of usability. I think that this does still fill modern roles well. It definitely does have limitations. If we're talking about shooting at something at distance, obviously you're limited, even with shotgun slugs. Rifled slugs are not as accurate as a centerfire rifle through a rifled barrel. They're, they're just not going to be. But you can still reach out and touch with them at 100 yards if you would have to, and have a ton of energy behind it. So I think for hunting applications, whether that's deer, or depending on your state and your regulations, this would be a good turkey gun. The list is pretty much endless and your creativity is what is going to limit you with this shotgun. So if I had to pick a couple traits that I would say were my favorite traits of this shotgun, it would be the fact that as soon as you rotate the tube into an empty chamber, it automatically loads the next round. I also love the fact that it's a bullpup, which means we have a full length legal barrel. This is not a short barrel shotgun and it is still less than 30 inches overall length. One of the other things I really like about this shotgun is the fact that it is actually reliable. There are a lot of shotguns out there that are extremely finicky and unreliable. And from my experiences up to this point, this is not one of those. If I had to pick a couple things to gripe about, one of the first things I would point out is that the safety is at a really odd location. It's very usable. I mean, you can get used to it, but what I found is I almost have to rotate my hand back away from the pistol grip to push the safety off. I'm just not super into the fact that there's no flip safety like an AR-15 or anything like that. I'm not sure what the theory is behind that, but if I had a gripe, that would be one of my first gripes. My other complaint is not really a complaint, it's a question. Are those magazine tubes going to be reliable? My biggest concern with them, because they're polymer and you've got a lot of moving pieces there rotating in between different tubes when you're shooting, my concern is reliability over time. The other downside of having magazine tubes on the bottom is you can't put any kind of accessories underneath. Your forend is literally the magazine for the gun and that's what you're holding on to. I could see future issues potentially down the road with that, but only time will tell. And as of this point, I've had no issues that were not user influence. Kind of touched on this already, but who's this shotgun for? So if you're an outdoorsman, a sportsman, you like to hunt with slugs, maybe your state doesn't allow center fire rifles. This would be a really good opportunity to get into an IWI TS-12, use it as a slug gun for deer hunting or something like that. If your state does not have magazine restrictions for turkey hunting, this would be a great turkey gun because you have chokes, you can throw in a turkey choke, put a tighter pattern down range, run some three inch magnum turkey loads, and this thing would be a freaking hammer for turkeys. If you're a shotgun person for home defense, and that's kind of your go-to platform, but you want something a little more compact than a Remington 870, a Mossberg 500, a Mossberg 590, something like that, this would be a great option. For me personally, shotguns are not my go-to for home defense. I would prefer a 300 Blackout or my Galil, but it is a very powerful option. It allows a ton of ammunition versatility, and you could even have each tube loaded with different ammunition. So the possibilities there are endless. So if you fit into one of those categories, you may be interested in this shotgun. With an MSRP of $1,399, this thing is in the ballpark of most other tactical shotguns. Yes, it's a little bit more on the expensive side, but with the features that you're getting with this shotgun, to me, it would make way more sense going this route versus something like a Mossberg 500 like I used to own. I would much prefer this platform to a regular pump or a regular traditional semi-automatic shotgun simply because of the ammunition capacity, the build quality, the versatility of it, the ability to mount different optics and lights and accessories on the M-Lock section, the fact that it's a bullpup design, all of these things would make it more appealing to me over a traditional shotgun. And that always begs the question, who is this shotgun not for? And this would not be a good shotgun if you are a traditionalist. That's pretty much what this comes down to. If you are dead set in your ways of owning a pump action or a traditional semi-automatic shotgun, 
you may not be happy with this shotgun at all. But if you don't fall into those categories and you do like the idea of a bullpup shotgun, you're an outside the box thinker, you may find a home with this shotgun. Now, as always, this is just my opinion. Yes, I may be a little biased. I try my best to stay unbiased and I will point out things that I believe are flaws. I will not lie to you and say something is good if it is junk. And my experiences are what I'm describing. All I can speak to is the experience that I had with this shotgun. And I was very happy with the reliability, the functionality. And I definitely think this is a shotgun worth considering. If you're interested in an IWI TS-12, I would recommend finding somewhere that has one and getting your hands on it yourself and manipulating all of the different functions. And I think you might be pleasantly surprised with this shotgun. Guys, I know I did not dive into things like accuracy with this shotgun. And the reason why is because it's a shotgun. Most people are going to run birdshot or buckshot. And honestly, up to this point, I did not see a ton of value in checking accuracy with rifled slugs because in my experiences in the past, every shotgun is different. With every smooth bore shotgun, you have to buy pretty much one of every kind of slug, figure out what works best for your particular shotgun, and then run with that. And maybe down the road I'll do a video on something like that, but I did not think that I needed to dive all the way into patterning this thing on video because there's plenty of other good videos out there showing you how to properly pattern a shotgun. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in and watching this video. Please take a second to leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell icon, and stay tuned. If you have any questions or suggestions for videos, please drop me an email at keystonecarrypa at gmail.com, and I will consider all of those as well. Again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, stay well, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.